American League All-Stars prepare to meet head-on in San Diego with the National League stars who want to stay ahead. And Willie McCovey hits career homer number 500. And you can bet he's headed for the Hall of Fame. Headlines and highlights coming up on This Week in Baseball. In the American League East, something has been brewing in Milwaukee, lifting the spirits of all, where pennant fever is really growing for the surprising Brewers, currently a second-place team. Of course, they're still a long way back from Boston, but lately the Brewers have been gaining ground and momentum playing some inspired baseball. second baseman Paul Molitor has been burning up the base pads as well as bruising the baseball. And all the Brewers are just bustling with hustling. The Brewers are charged up with sound performances like pitcher Larry Sorensen, who's come from nowhere to become the ace of a much improved pitching staff. And Larry Heisel, the man Milwaukee put its money on, is back from injury and hitting the long ones. Yes, sir, with still half a season to go, better keep an eye on the Brew Crew. Meanwhile, on the balmy Canadian shores of Lake Ontario, Toronto fans at Exhibition Stadium were treated to an exciting exhibition by their Blue Jays against the Baltimore Orioles. From the viewpoint of Earl Weaver and his strong pitching staff, this outburst was strictly for the birds. The birds, in this case, being the Blue Jays, who knocked the Orioles right off their feet. Toronto opened the series by clobbering Baltimore 24 to 10. John Mayberry driving home seven runs. Now Rico Carty and the rest of the Blue Jays were out to prove that that game is no fluke, and Blue Jay bats plays to a doubleheader sweep. Rico and his teammates were in no hurry. They'd just take it slow and give everyone time to count up all those hits and runs. straight, but not all of the games were won by line drives and colossal clouts. Sam Ewing in the 10th inning. Watch him now. He takes a mighty big cut. A little looper wins the ball game. How about that? 42 runs in four games against the hottest pitching in the league by a team now only in its second major league season. Well, as they say, that's the name of the game. This is Larry Doby a White Sox coach until recently hired by owner Bill Beck to replace manager Bob Lemon. In any normal occupation, that might cause hard feelings, but baseball people tend to stick together. 
Doby becomes baseball's second black manager. A coincidence in that he was also baseball's second black player, the first in the American League. He came to the Indians in 1947 after playing for the all-black Newark Eagles, became a star right away. In 1948, his first full year, the Indians won the pennant on the last day of the season while setting an attendance record at Municipal Stadium. One of their pitchers that year was 20-game winner Bob Lemon, the same man Doby just replaced. The Indians won the series, a joyous occasion for all, including owner Bill Beck. 30 years later, they're still friends. When you consider the fact that there's a few people in this world you can call your friends, and Bob is my friend, that's, that's very limited. So when, when I have that kind of feeling, he has that kind of feeling, we're, we're, we're kind of lucky, we're kind of blessed that we're friends. Well, I feel the same way about Larry. I was there in 47, Cleveland, when he joined the ball club. I know, I know what he went through. And uh, that's going to be, uh, right now, it's just going to be a cakewalk to, compared to what he went, uh, went through in 47. And I wish him the best of luck. And so, with Bob Lemon's blessing, manager Larry Doby went on to win his first game two days after being hired by Bill Beck, the same man who signed him 21 years ago. Times have changed since the days when Doby was the only black in the American League. But nothing has changed the friendships shared by Bill Beck, Bob Lemon, and Larry Dope. Well, Rod Carew, without question, is one of the two great hitters that uh, I've seen in my time. Uh, I think, without question, Ted Williams was the greatest hitter I ever played with, and Rodney, by far, is the greatest manager, uh, greatest player I ever managed. Any manager who had Rod Carew on his team would have to agree with the Twins' Gene Mock. Rod Carew is just the best hitter in the land, that's all, and again, he's leading the majors. The Twins' first baseman is the number one vote getter in this year's All-Star balloting. He'll be there Tuesday night in San Diego with an American League squad which hopes to win its first All-Star game since 1971. And for the third year in a row, Kansas City's George Brett will be at third base, the only American leaguer to edge out Peru for a batting title in the last six years. Brett separated his shoulder early in the season, but recovered quickly and is on his way to another strong year. With Brett at third, the left side of the infield will be all Kansas City, with the speedster Fred Patek, last year's American League base dealing king, making his first start as the all-star shortstop, an honor long overdue for this 33-year-old veteran. Milwaukee's Don Money is another class veteran finally getting due recognition. A tough clutch hitter, as well as a highly skilled fielder, he's played all infield positions and the outfield. But in the All-Star game, Money will be at second base. Looking to the outfield, the Rangers' Richie Zisk will be there. He's a proven hitter who hits for power. This year, his home runs have already won game after game. Last year, he was the only American League All-Star to get two hits, one of them a two-run double. Richie Zisk, a man who loves to perform when the pressure is on. Talking about a pressure performer, here he is, New York's Reggie Jackson, who will also start in the outfield. And after last year's World Series, it's not hard to see why. Reggie has also made home runs count this year, like this grand slammer against Detroit. Jackson may not make as many headlines this year because the Yankees are struggling behind the Red Sox, who will have scrambling Carlton Fisk behind the plate in the All-Star game. The Boston catcher's been grabbing a lot of attention lately with his hot bat and gutsy defense. But when it really comes to grabbing attention, no one has done it this season like Boston outfielder Jim Rice, whose potential is awesome. As far as my career-wise, I really can't say. I don't know what I can do and what I can't do as far as uh, learning the game. Every year you have a tendency of learning. Uh, your scrimmage can have 18 years and have a tendency of learning something new every day. This is what I want to do. I want to learn every day. I want to work hard, which I'm doing now. I feel like the only way you can better yourself is to go out and work and try to improve every year. 
If Bryce keeps improving at his present rate, he'll leave every other slugger in baseball far behind. The Red Sox are currently leading the Eastern Division far behind, and more than anyone else, they can thank Jim Rice, who easily leads the majors in homers and RBIs. And now fans will see if Bryce and American League teammates can stop their all-star jinx. But if they do, they'll have to beat veteran National Leaguers like third baseman Pete Rose, who still plays with the exuberance of a rookie. Take a look at Pete, and as hard as he works, he hasn't got that 36-year-old body that everybody says as far as his age is concerned. If you look at Pete, he's got a 25, 26-year-old body, and he works at it. He works hard out here. He's always doing something. He's running, he's throwing, he's hitting, he's in that cage. He's always doing something. He just loves, still loves to play the game, and I think that's the big secret of Pete. Obviously, fans have loved to watch Pete play for quite a while since this will be his 11th All-Star appearance. Earlier this year, Rose became the 13th player in history to collect 3,000 base hits and is one of three Cincinnati players who have dominated the All-Star game for close to a decade. This will be Joe Morgan's eighth All-Star game. Morgan also set a record this year 91 consecutive games at second base without an error, though he almost missed that record with this play. Catcher Johnny Bench has never missed an All-Star game since his Major League career began 11 years ago. John was hospitalized with back problems recently, but he's back in uniform now and should be ready to give his best in the All-Star game. Larry Boa of the Phillies will be the starting National League shortstop. Boa is enjoying his finest season ever, recently leading the league in hitting and even threatening his own National League record for top defensive play at shortstop. This will be Larry's fourth All-Star game, but only second as a starter. In the outfield, the Dodgers' Rick Mundy returns to the dream game for the first time in 10 years, and the first time as a National Leaguer. Slowed by an injury in 76, Mundy got off to a tremendous start this year and carried the Dodgers through the early stages. Philadelphia's Greg Luzinski will be playing left field for the third year in a row. The Bulls' batting average is way down this season, but once again, he's among the league leaders in homers and RBIs. Cincinnati's George Foster makes his third straight start. Shooting for another home run title, his bat can put runs on the board and his glove can help keep them off. First baseman Steve Garvey of the Dodgers rounds out this year's All-Star starting lineups. It's Steve's fifth straight start. In his previous four, he batted 462. Although the National League has won 14 of the last 15 games, Steve Garvey feels you can always do better. There's always room for improvement. I haven't batted 1,000 yet or driven in a run every time I've gone up there. So I'm always striving to have that perfect day, day after day. And I think if you have this type of incentive and enthusiasm and the willingness to give 100% every day throughout a long, hot season, then I think you're going to uh, improve consistently. And that's what I want to do. I want to still be improving that last year that I played. On Tuesday night, baseball fans will be welcomed to this lovely setting. San Diego Stadium, home of the Padres, and the site of this year's Major League All-Star Game. San Diego's Dave Winfield starred in last year's midseason classic with the game-winning RBI, and he continues to star with the Padres this year, collecting over 60 runs batted in in less than half a season.
Padre relief ace Raleigh Fingers has been selected to this year's National League All-Star pitching staff. And the more Fingers pitches, the better he seems to get. His 35 saves led the majors last year, and now he leads again with close to 20. Tuesday night, the camera may well focus on the San Diego firemen. And from time to time, even on San Diego's newest star, a bird with a lot of talent. in the ballpark. It's still foul territory. Cincinnati fans watched another showdown between the Reds and Dodgers. Los Angeles had been struggling in third place, but now it had the Reds grasping to hold on to second. The game of inches. Griffey can't quite hold it. Reggie Smith gets a double. Now Ken Griffey is in back and smashes one hard to right. Smith does hold on. The Dodgers were back in the race, and that had the Reds a little worried. for their ace, Tom Seaver, who pitched a fine game until he was measured perfectly by Steve Garvey. There it is, and it's gone. Garvey's blast sent uneasy murmurs throughout Riverfront Stadium. It was the Reds' sixth loss in a row. went all the way to pitch a two to nothing shutout, giving the Dodgers their sixth straight win. L.A. went on to take three of four from the Reds and move into second place in the National League West. Meanwhile, in Atlanta, the first place Giants were trying to widen their lead over the Reds and Dodgers. This series with the Braves included some big blasts, like this pinch hit grand slam by Mike Ivey his second this season, tying a record set by Philadelphia's Dave Johnson one month earlier. Everybody was hitting the long ball in this series. Atlanta's Jeff Burroughs charged back to regain the league lead in hitting without losing his power stroke. The Giants' Jack Clark hit five homers in three days. Clark can hit homers, and he can also take them away. How about that? Dale Murphy lost that one. Perhaps Murphy's law applies in baseball, too. But the next time up, Dale simply hit it a little farther with the bases loaded. Another grand slam. The Braves' power attack took three of four from the Giants. But years from now, all of that may be forgotten for this. The 500th career home run for Willie McCovey, earning him this week's Gillette Special. McCovey is only the 12th man in history to hit 500. And no other player is likely to reach that milestone for at least seven years. Congratulations, Willie. And that's it for this week. Hope to see you next week, folks, on This Week in Baseball.